The short answer is, delete your most used apps. But since that is easier said than done, you'll find the long answer by the end of this video. Let's say you're working and for an important reason, your phone has to be close to you. Suddenly the screen flashes and plays a sound. You realize you've got a notification and tilt your head to check it. It's from Instagram. Apparently someone liked your photo. You click on it and now you're on Instagram. You remember the photo you posted, which puts a slight smile on your face. You click on the home button to see what people are up to and see a funny meme. You scroll down to see if there are more and come across a reel. You watch it and scroll for more. By doing so, you end up spending an hour remembering nearly nothing. That sucks. And all of us have experienced it. Now, the scenario doesn't have to begin like this but it generally ends like this. So let's try changing the scenario itself. First of all, our goal is not to magically cut off using social media or our phones, but to gradually decrease it to a level where we won't be harming ourselves. Tip number one, use only the main features of the apps. This is actually a pretty critical one because the most time you spend on Instagram, for example, is by watching reels. And the same goes for shorts on YouTube, but those are not the main features of those apps. And still, we spend a lot of time on them because they're lucrative and getting drastically pushed by the apps. On YouTube, for example, if you never watch shorts, the short shelf will be four to five videos down, but it will gradually increase if you start watching them. So I would say stop using non-main features like shorts and reels. If you want to watch short form videos, for example, because yeah, sometimes it's nice to just sit back and enjoy your time without having to think much. It's like watching TV. Watch TikToks. Because that's the main feature of TikTok. And you can probably find everyone in TikTok too. Because when you open TikTok, you intend to watch that kind of content. Short form, vertical, TikToks. And that's what we're aiming for. To only consume the media you intended to consume. Though that includes the apps themselves too. When you pick up your phone and see the colorful Instagram icon on the home screen or as a notification on the lock screen, you feel like opening it, right? That's pretty normal, because that's the goal of the companies, to grab your attention. But if you have your own goals and didn't actually pick up your phone to scroll in Instagram, why not just remove the icon? Yeah, just the icon. Since seeing that icon is the first signal that stimulates your brain. With the icons gone from your home screen, you'll have to search for the specific app's name or use the app library. But let's not stop there and solve a bigger problem. <laughs> My cat is meowing. <laughs> In the settings app, go to the notifications page and scroll down a bit. From there, start turning off the lock screen and banner alerts for all the major apps. If you really want to have the notifications listed and check everything later in one go, like I do, you can leave the notification center alert. This way you won't be getting immediate notifications that are just disturbances and distractions, but we'll also have them stored in one out of sight place. Now remember the from the intro? You wouldn't hear that if you were to use focus or do not disturb modes. I actually have different focus modes for different activities and I benefit greatly from them. For for example, when I'm working or at school, my family and very close friends can call me, but I don't see any messages, because if it's really an emergency, they would call. And not receiving any messages during class really helps me keep focused. Let's continue on the settings app. Go ahead to accessibility and touch in there. Turn off the tap to wake. This will prevent you from tapping on your screen twice to get it open, which is a mindless thing you automatically do. And remember, we want to use our phones very intentionally, just like a tool we benefit from. The peer of this setting is called raise to wake. You need that turned off too. With these two features turned off, you'll have to turn on your screen by intentionally pressing the side button that is far away from your fingers. In our case, this trouble is a good thing, because we want our phones to be less accessible, less fun and less attractive, so that we spend less time on them. And the best way to make our phone less fun and attractive is by turning off all the colors. Colors are the backbone of the media. So turning them off makes a huge difference, as you can probably tell. <laughs> because without any colors, it's not that much fun to scroll for an hour. To turn colors off, you need to go to the accessibility display and text size and scroll down to the color filters. You need to first turn it on and then select grayscale 
This will make everything look in grey tones, making your phone way more boring. By the way, you know the app limits, right? You may have tried using this setting before or maybe not, I don't know. But the basic promise is that it locks you out when you use the app for the set period. But this sucks in many ways. And the most major reason is that it lets you longer your usage time. Like, what the hell? Oh, so you're saying I can just tap a button and get 15 more minutes? Well, that's not really helpful when I already have many excuses to use the app more. But recently, I started using an app called ScreenZen for time control. And it has so many useful and interesting features. Well, I don't know if I need to say this, but like, they're not sponsored to this video, man. They're not. They, they, no, they wouldn't. They, they, so these are just my genuine thoughts and experiences with the app. Well, I'm not gonna dive too deep into the settings, but basically with this app, you can set usage limits, maximum times you can launch an app, hard block yourself from accessing that app, and even hard block yourself from changing the settings so you wouldn't be able to cheat by increasing the numbers. The app also lets you set a delay before launching an app. And trust me, even just sitting there and having a 12 second breathing exercise just to get Instagram launched for 7 minutes makes a big difference. You can set different kinds of stuff to do in the waiting times too. Just play around with the settings. So this app not only sets you time limits, launch limits and time limits per launch, but also makes you think before using an app. You can set it to 1 minute for example. And in that one minute, you'd have to do something else or use the time to think about why you're even launching the app. This is pretty useful, because most of the time, we don't even know what we're doing with our phones. I'm pretty sure you're spending a lot of time on social media, be it Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or maybe here on YouTube. But you sure are spending a lot of time with a combination of these social media apps. I would suggest unfollowing the people you don't know. No celebrities, brands, meme pages, etc. Just follow your family and friends. Why? You might ask. And my answer would be you don't need to. You will be seeing what's up with them in other platforms anyway. I'm talking specifically about Instagram by the way. But you can apply this to any platform that was once like more of a private place. You see pictures from your friends and family. But I, for example, am barely seeing anything from my friends. I follow way too many cat pages and although I like watching goofy cat videos all day, that's not why I use Instagram. And plus to this, I wasn't even seeing pictures from half of the celebrities, pages and brands I follow and the other half was posting once every two years or something so I was just seeing the memes from reddit tweet screenshots from Twitter and reels from TikTok. so what was the benefit of using Instagram in the way I was using it well after I'm following around 30 hundred accounts I saw that I really didn't have much left to spend time on the app because now I was only seeing pictures from my friends which was way more pleasant remember when I said we want to be very intentional with what we're consuming well if you're used to to use the Instagram the way I used it, you're basically being fed content from other platforms. It's convenient, of course, but it's not intentional in our end. If you wanna laugh at memes, might as well check Reddit. Wanna read tweets? Well, Elon just rebranded as X and I'm not a big fan of it, but might as well check that. Do you see where I'm trying to head? Try your best to separate your activity throughout the apps and sites. For some time now, these mega corporations have been trying to have as big of a piece of the pie as they can by implementing features from each other. But I believe that has a negative effect on us because we end up losing focus and spending way more time on stuff we didn't intend to. I'm not saying go out there and handpick everything you consume. Sometimes it's nice to not worry and watch whatever plays on TV while lying on the couch. But when you have PlayStation, Xbox, DVDs and a bunch of other stuff near the TV, the session won't end up with just the activity you planned on doing. That's my whole point. If a random combination of these tips ends up helping you decrease the time you spend on your phone, please let me know in the comments. If you have more tips for all of us, please write them too. I'll be linking some creators who inspired me to make this video down below. Thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you happier with your progress in the next video. Until then, take care and bye bye. Ya oğlum.